Hello and good evening, everyone. I want to welcome you to this brand new episode of the Better Together Facebook Live. I am your host, Barb Roos, and here on the Better Together Facebook Live show is where we gather up and we talk about our hopes, our dreams, our worries, and our waistlines. And friends, it doesn't matter where you come from or what you've been through. Here on the Better Together Facebook Live show is where we find the hope the help, as well as the practical next steps so that we can all get better together. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time, I am so glad that you're here. And if you are a regular part of our Better Together audience, whether you are watching live or on the replay, you know that we love having the conversations together. And this is an interactive show. I wanna hear from you. Our special guests wanna hear from you. So if you would go ahead and jump in the chat and say hi, tell me how you are doing today. And you don't have to worry about trying to make it pretty, be honest and real. Uh, if you're watching live, go ahead and tell me what's happening now. If you're watching on the replay, Go ahead, jump in, share your comments so that I can see them later. And uh, today's show, I'm so glad that you join me because I get a chance to talk with a friend of mine that I met a number of years ago. And we're going to talk about that it's okay to be messed up because right now there is a lot of things that are happening. There are a lot of things that are happening. And if you feel like you're kind of struggling holding it all together, uh, you're going to not only feel encouraged and you're going to laugh today, but we're going to ask you to give yourself permission to let go of some of the things that you might be uh, just trying to hold on to that are stressing you out. Uh, but before we do that, I received the most precious note uh, from a woman yesterday on Instagram. And uh, during this season for me, I care about serving others well. And this was someone who had begun my surrendered Bible study. And this sweet note was um, something that I care about. Whenever I write a Bible study, I want women to feel like I am there with them. And so surrendered, letting go and living like Jesus. Uh, this is a Bible study that I wrote uh, a year ago during a really tough season in life. And it's about Jesus' time in the wilderness. And uh, during the Bible study, not only do we study how Jesus responded in faith and how the Israelites struggled, but I also talk about the experiences that we went through as a family and really hard things that I had to let go of. And so this lovely woman named Trisha sent me a message on Instagram two days ago, and she said, uh, among other things, that the Bible study was a blessing. But she said, Barb, I feel like you are sitting next to me as I'm doing this study. And that is something that's precious to me because we are all in this life together. And so if you've been going through a difficult season, if you've been stressed, if you've been trying to figure out where is God at in this hard place, uh, I want to encourage you to check out the Surrendered Bible Study. And so uh, my fabulous producer, uh, Tabitha, she's going to put a link in the comments and so you can check it out. Now, for tonight's show, uh, I am so excited that you get a chance to meet someone that I met years ago. And uh, tonight we're going to talk about giving ourselves permission to let go of expectations. And so uh, we, one of my expectations is that at some point technology should cooperate. Right before the show, my internet went crazy. So usually I have like my phone up and I have the, uh, the, the bio of the person that I'm going to read. And so right now I'm going to kind of switch and come up with a new game plan. So my guest tonight is Carrie Pomeroli, and I'm going to read her bio right from the back of her new book. And uh, the book is Confessions of a Proverbs 32 Woman. Let me go this way. I'm, you guys, I'm batting with a thousand today. So let me tell you about Carrie. Carrie is a writer, comedian, speaker, and the ultimate Proverbs 32 woman. She tours nationwide with clean comedy at top Christian and secular venues with film and TV appearances. You guys, Carrie has been on The Tonight Show 29 times. Uh, she's a writer for the Hallmark Channel. She is known as Hollywood's 
favorite God girl. Carrie and her daughters live in LA by the sea. I met Carrie back in 2015. She was a, the comedian at a conference that I co-hosted with friends called the Fabulous Women's Conference. And she was so much fun. It has been a joy for me to stay connected with her over the years. I'm excited that you get a chance to hear from Carrie this evening. So friends, please welcome to the Better Together Facebook Live, Carrie Pomeroli. Hi, Barb. How are you? Whoo, honey, I'm happy we made it to this point. Thank you. And How it's so you? funny. Uh, I've lived out in California 25 years, and I, I still have my Midwest accent. And if I hear even just a smidge of somebody from the Midwest, I get all... And I know you probably think that you don't have an accent. We all think we don't have an accent. But when you were like, I just got to do that. And it's like, oh, my gosh, you got to do it. I'm like, it's just home. It just makes me homesick. I'm so glad. And, and speaking of that, tell everyone, because you live in L.A., but where are you originally from? Okay, don't hate me, because I know that we were rivals um, on the football field, but nobody cares anymore because of COVID. But I'm from Michigan. I'm a Detroit girl, but um, you and Ohio people, we can hate Notre Dame together. We can ban. And apparently my Lakers just won the world championship, but nobody cares because LA is so apathetic. Like literally like no one even announced it. And I got a Twitter announcement that Lakers just won the national. That is such an LA thing. If there was Detroit, we would be like climbing walls and setting fires and doing all that cool stuff that Detroiters do. Oh, so basketball is over. Yeah, Lakers won, but I don't care. I'm I'm still going to root for the Pistons no matter what. Good for you. And I mean, I'll, I'll forgive it because it's Michigan, but uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, I am so glad that you said yes to coming by Better Together and the audience who, for who is out there uh, today, Carrie is coming by. She's going to talk to us about how to let go of some of the expectations that we've had. So give Sherry or give Carrie a shout out in the comments. And uh, we always start with an icebreaker question for the audience. And so audience, uh, what are some of the things that you have been critical of yourself for? Uh, some of the things that you've criticized yourself, beat yourself up about, uh, talk about that in the comments. I mean, you don't need to go all in the details. Uh, but we're going to have a great conversation today. Carrie's going to talk to us about where she's been in these last COVID months and just some of the journey that she's had. But uh, before we do that, Carrie, are you down with playing a game with us? Yes, let's do it. All right. Well, this is a, a brief game that we call first thing that comes to mind. And so I'm going to give you one word of something. And I want you to tell me the first thing that comes to mind and audience you are invited to play along with us as well. So carries this out. Are you down with this? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So the very first word that comes to mind is cooking. Cream. Cream. Oh, I like that. All righty. Care to expand? Because cream is cream is good. Cookies and cream ice cream. Like, come on. Is there nothing better? There's nothing better. Beautiful. Awesome. I love that. All right. Audience, you can dive in, share your answers as well. And oh, so did you say cooking? Okay. I thought you said cookie. So cooking, the first thing that comes to mind is Ruby because my daughter has been doing cooking shows. And even during her Zoom math class, she's been hosting her own cooking shows. Uh, so like they'll be doing a math problem and my nine-year-old's like, hey guys, it's me, Ruby. Welcome to my cooking show. So um, she always thinks she's on all the time, but she's been cooking all summer and it's been really fun. I love that. So during math class, she is hosting her oh. own cooking show. Can you tell whose child she is? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, speaking of cooking, I saw that you received an Instapot recently. I did. I did. And uh, how how is that going? Well, you know what? For the normal kind of person that knows how to use kitchen appliances, like, they would be crushing it. Uh, right now, I've just mastered boiled eggs in the Instapot. And I feel like that's a personal victory. And like, put it this way, my oven is the closest thing to a bread box. Like, you know, when your grandma used to use the microwave to put chips in it, like she didn't know how to use it. That's about how much my oven is used. So um, I've made a couple things in the Instapot. 
But I, I have to confess to you, Barb, I'm a crock pot girl. Like I know how to use the crock pot. You put the ribs in there, you put the barbecue sauce, you leave it alone for seven hours. The Instagram is kind of like a podcast. There's a lot of buttons and you never know what's going to happen. That is true. That, that, you know what, that is true. So I've been on a big soup kick. I know we're playing the game and I should move it along, but um, I've been on a soup kick. Do you have okay. a hot soup recipe that I need to be in on? Yeah, you know what, and I can send it to you. I'm, my family's from Alabama and they make this thing called Brunswick stew, or as we used to call it, camp stew. Have you ever heard of that? Ooh. And it's, they used to cook it in these literal cauldrons all day in the Alabama heat because we used to have big family picnics in Alabama. And like one of the grandmas, the Southerners that are listening right now, they know what I'm talking about, but it's a camp stew. It's so good. It takes hours and hours and hours to cook. And you have to be a legit cook because the recipe has about 897 ingredients, <laughs> but it's worth it, but it's totally worth it. Send, send it along. because I, I will. It. All right. Okay, so word number two, because I know that uh, my producer Tabitha is like, move it along, Barb. Okay, word number two. Here we are. You ready for word number two? Yeah. Okay, it is daughters. First thing that comes to mind tax write off. That's true. <laughs> I have two daughters, and I make them come on stage with me, and then I write it off on my taxes. <laughs> uh, Love it. Well, in fact, I was on your Facebook page and uh, audience in the description for today's show is how you can get connected with Carrie. Uh, I was scrolling through and I saw the most beautiful photo of your daughter's artwork. And we actually got a picture. We're going to just kind of top of us. And um, it, oh my gosh, it is of the beautiful pink ballerina dress. And uh, Thank I think it you. Was Lucy that did it? Yeah, and she's like, she's one of those kids that's kind of maddening. Like, she's never had an art lesson, so she's like, I think I'll paint. And then she's never taking guitar, and now she's playing Fleetwood Mac. Like, she's an anomaly to me, except you can't get this kid to focus on one thing. You know what I mean? I'm like, try to paint another one. She's like, why would I do that? I, I, I'm done. Like, I, I've peaked, you know? So <laughs> I don't know, kids like that. And she's very focused, though. She wants to be a Supreme Court judge. Like she's always said that since she was nine years old, I want to be a Supreme Court judge. And I said, why? And she goes, because if I was president, um, I wouldn't have a lot of time off. And I feel like if I was a judge, I'll have more time to spend with my family. Uh, so I think she's going to be a great lawyer because she lies with very much conviction. Like mm -hmm. I believe her no matter what she's saying. So we'll, we'll see what happens to that kid. And then I have another daughter. Her name is Ruby Joy and she's my cook. And she's my comedian. So it's it's a lot of laughs around the house. I, I love that. And I think that that's a beautiful segue because uh, you are a comedian. Uh, yet during the COVID crisis, uh, there have been some things that have not been very funny. So I wanted you to come and hang out with the Better Together audience uh, because the actual pandemic has turned your world upside down. And so tonight I want you to be able to talk to us about the three things and we'll cover them one at a time, but just three of the expectations that you have freed yourself from. Uh, I was inspired by your newest book. Uh, you are an accomplished author amongst many other things, but your latest book, uh, Confessions of a Proverbs 32 Woman, How I Went from Messed Up to Blessed Up Without Changing a Single Thing. Uh, you talk about the themes of of just letting go of perfectionism and grace and finding laughter. And how have you in this season, how has that played out? Because before we talk about the expectations, uh, what has it been like for you during the pandemic? Well, I did a, a thing called the whole body challenge as soon as COVID started. Have you ever heard of it? No. It's how much food can I get in my whole body every single day, all the time. So uh, my whole family was on that. We started eating earthquake food. We started eating stuff in the back of the cabinet that you thought was from the 1990s, like stovetop stuffing and water chestnuts. And it was like, you know, if we're going to be doomsday preppers, we might as well eat all this food. And um, that went from March to July until I had a come to Jesus moment with my closet when it was like 
there's no room for you. There's no room for you in this closet. And everybody that I know went to Target and bought that one. You had to have at least one fat dress. So I started with one fat dress. And when I got to four fat dresses, like Moo Moo's, like Mrs. Roper, um, I knew that that was a cry for help. <laughs> so that was my first. We just ate our way through the pandemic for four months straight. Like that was the first reaction to it. Very much so. And, and and as a comedian, I mean, there you were in L.A., you all had just this incredible career. And then what happened? Well, literally, it was like being fired eight times or nine times all in one day. Come here. Uh, so basically, all of my jobs for the first time in 14 years just shut down immediately. My 12 year old's here. She's going to pop in. See a tax write off. Say hi. Go to the camera like closer to me. This is Lucy McGee. She's going to be a teenager on Friday. Yes. Oh my and uh, we're so close. We spent all this quality time together and we never fight. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> but um, it was crazy, Barb. Everything shut down in 24 hours. I had a sold out show with 1500 tickets sold Friday, the 13th of March. And they had to cancel that day. And, and I just bought a house. You guys, if you don't think I know fear, uh, it was crazy. I'm a single mom and I bought a house in LA. And when you buy a house in LA, you have to give them a kidney and plasma and like your firstborn, you know? And so um, I really learned how to pivot. That's the word for pandemic for me is how do we make a left turn when we can't go straight anymore? Do you know what I mean? Like that was my big lesson during all this time. Yeah. Well, and as you were pivoting, there were clearly a lot of things that you had to manage. And um, to pivot, that means that uh, we've got to be mobile and agile and we can't hold on to everything. So uh, when you think about this time of your life, um, what was one of the expectations? I mean, we're going to talk about two or three of them, but what was one of the expectations that you realized that you just you needed to let go of, let yourself off the hook? I mean, a lot of it had to do with parenting. My 12 year old's screaming right now. And she's like, mom, I want to be, I want to be a punk rocker. I want to dye my hey. Hair. And then now we're fighting about dyeing your hair. And I was, I was like, what is your problem? She goes, I just want to go through something, mommy. I just want to go through something. Can I chop all my hair off? And she, I was like, fine, chop all your hair off. I don't even care. Like if you get dressed today, that's a win. So a lot of my parenting was live and let live. I know that sounds terrible, but I was like, we're just going to get through this together. And when my kids made it through class, like my nine-year-old, when she made the honor roll, I wanted a crown. I wanted a tiara. I was like, I have worked to get her through the third grade. But so much of it was with ice cream and Hallmark movies. You know, like what, and, and also whatever's going on in your third grade's math career is not going to define whether she's homeless or not 20 years from now. And we put too much pressure on ourselves as parents to be perfect. And um, I kind of let a lot of it out the window and I, I don't regret it at all. That is so good. But you can't dye your hair, Lucy, until Halloween. No, 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 no. Box dye that's temporary. No. Right. And so audience, uh, the same question goes for you. Tabitha is going to pop this up on the screen. And so uh, audience, what's an expectation for yourself that you let go of? Uh, Carrie, when you think about for you, and letting go of that expectation, how did you like? How did you get to that point? Was it easy for you to go? You know what? I'm just not going to die. I'm not going to die on all these hills. Or did you really have to wrestle with choosing what was going to be the most important? I uh, tend to just be very black or white. So it's kind of like dieting. I'm either on or I'm off. And when I was off, I was kind of like, I'm off. Like. And I was raised by a very different mother and I love her dearly, but she's from the South. And so a lot of perfectionism and you need to have this expectation and you need to dress a certain way and look a certain way and have your hair be a certain way. And I was like, it's saying to my mom, I'm like, mom, like, yes, my daughter's wearing a wool hat and a snowsuit in LA right now, but she, she got dressed. I'm pretty sure she had a bath this week. Like I just, I wasn't going to fight the small battles when I was fighting the battles to keep my house, to keep my faith, to keep my sanity, to keep the bills being paid, to keep from being foreclosed on. You know what I mean? Because there's certain mortgage companies that were like, oh, yeah, we're going to defer your payments. And then there's the ones that are like, we hate you. Like, please give us money right now. So everything just went up in the air at one time. And I was like, Lord, I'm only going to hold on to what you 
what you need me to. And everything else is, is it's all on you. And I've watched him provide for me in the most miraculous ways. I got a plumbing bill for my new house. It was $1,100. I'm like, oh, this is wonderful. And I was like, we don't need water, you know. And so all of a sudden, on the same day as I was praying, this girlfriend of mine uh, sent me $500 from Michigan. And I said, why, why did you do that? And she said, well, my husband's business is thriving and we wanted to tithe in to someone's ministry and God said to give it to you. And I said, what is his business? And she said, he's a plumber. <laughs> so those are the type of supernatural miracles that are happening for me all the time. Stop it. That yeah. And one thing that I really started doing that I'd never really done before I got old school and I would always believed in the power of the spoken word. And, you know, I got old school Kenneth Copeland and I laminated declarations for my daughters and I, and we still do them every day. And I started declaring finances and I started declaring goodness. And I started declaring my cup of runneth over and, uh, you know, all these things that I was like, well, that would be good if it happened. And I watched the Lord come through for me, not in the ways that I thought he would in better and bigger ways. But I do believe in the power of the word. I love that. And I love for the audience as you're listening, uh, we had another question. Um, and Tabitha, because I'm on a different screen, if there's some comments, Tabitha, you guys, you guys know, if you've watched the show, my fabulous producer Tabitha is in the back and She's taking care of things. If there are comments, Tabitha, that I need to know, we'll just put them up on the screen. Um, and so Cynthia, oh, look, Carrie, we were talking about Cynthia earlier. And uh, Cynthia said the expectation she let um, she let herself default to buying paper towels online. So I Cynthia, mean, that is very bougie because I buy paper towels at the dollar store. And let me just tell you, Barb, there was a couple COVID moments with that ham that ham looked pretty good at the dollar store. I mean, I had to walk away, but it's good to know that it's there if I need it. Now, that does not mean I did not buy the salt and vinegar pork rinds. That does not mean I didn't buy Christ toothpaste. I'm saying there are certain <laughs> items. The dollar store is my friend. It has gotten me through COVID. My daughter's yeah. birthday presents are all from the Dollar Tree this year. You know what? You you found you found that as a source of blessing. That is beautiful. Well, oh gosh. Cynthia, thank you. Uh, and ladies and Carrie, oh, so Kathy Hendry, she said shopping. So permission to change. Love that, Kathy. Uh, Tabitha, who else do we have out there talking about expectations that you let go of during the pandemic? Uh, I know for me, one of the expectations that I let go of. Uh, was for me just to to um, lower the things that I accomplished every day. Uh, I used to always have this long to-do list of things. And I finally just was like, you know what? I just, if I have five things I need to do today, I need to just aim for two. I can't just- And I, I know can't. that, I know, Barb, that you're in the book world and my agent is listening. And I'm such a rapid writer. I mean, I wrote an entire book in 30 days because they told me I couldn't do it. Uh, and uh, true story. And I, oh, I owe Cynthia a book proposal, but I am telling you, I have never struggled more in my life with, with the to-do list is now triple, right? It's now triple. And just trying to get those things done that you had those time to do, like write those book chapters and be creative. And I'm like, how am I supposed to be creative and write a parenting book when I'm hiding under the bed eating donuts? And then Cynthia and I were talking and she was like, and I was like, that's the book. It's a parenting book about eating donuts and parenting because, you know, you have to, you have to be in the moment where you are. Don't try to be six months ahead. Don't try to be six steps ahead. Be in the moment, whatever that means to you. Do you know what I mean? And that doesn't mean that you won't get things done, but just give yourself a little grace. But I do have a guilt complex that I'm not doing everything all the time because there's just, it's a never ending lift. I, I've had insomnia so bad uh during this covid and i'm up at two in the morning like reorganizing drawers you know what i mean it's terrible well, well and i it, uh, i'm sad that that is what you're going through but i know that we know that most of the audience who's listening ladies if you're listening live or on the replay today's guest is Carrie Pomeroli, and she is a comedian and author and we'll hopefully talk to the Hallmark channel in a moment and uh, but 
I know that women are like, yeah, because there's been so much that's been on our hearts and our minds. Um, and so part of that is letting go of some of the weight of the things that we're carrying. And so is there another expectation that you of yourself that you've you've let go of? You've given yourself permission. Yeah. Um, I live in Hollywood. It is probably one of the most vain, vain you know, places on the planet of Earth. And you know, my weight and my looks and getting my hair perfect. I mean, I literally had like, they know me at the blow dry bar because I can't even, you know, I'm so vain about the way I have to look. And I haven't had my hair. I know this may sound silly, but I haven't had my hair colored since 2019. I haven't had a manicure. I haven't had a pet. Like all those things just don't matter to me. And now my hairdresser's like, uh, you could call me. Like you could come in, wink, wink. You probably should. I'm like, no, girl, we're going to ride this out. I got to see what color hair God gave me because I don't know. I haven't seen my hair since 1986 in fourth grade. So let's do this. And I mean, my hairdresser is like, I'm not sure it's a good idea. I'm like, no, no, I'm in now. But like a lot of vanity for me has just gone by the wayside. Um, I'm sure it'll all come back once I start touring again. And I am touring a little bit, but it's sort of like, you know, whether my nails are done or what the pedicure looks like does not make me a better comedian. It doesn't make me a better mom. There's nothing wrong with any of those things, but the need for them is something I let go of. Mm, that's, and that's beautiful. Cause like you said, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's that, that it is not something that, that you're just going to be, you're, it's been tough with the whole hair situation and how many women really struggled with the, with um, not feeling their best because they didn't look their best. And there's a space where we can give ourselves permission to go, you know what, no matter how I look, I'm gonna celebrate me. And you know what, Barb? It's about redefining what best is. Who's the one that tells you that you have to have a certain hair color to look your best? Who's the one that tells you, I can't look good in my moo moo, okay? I rock the Target moo moo. I crushed the Target moo moo all summer, all right? So I'm just saying that you out there who's watching this, redefine your standards on who's telling you what best is and just give yourself a little pat on the back. Mm, that is good. That is good. Hey, hey, audience, if you're just joining me, uh, I am talking with Carrie Pomeroli. Her latest book is titled Confessions of a Proverbs 32 Woman. And uh, speaking of pivot, Carrie, uh, tell us about the Proverbs 32 Woman. Kind of how did that roll up into your life? Well, uh, even back in 2015, I was talking about how I was never going to be a Proverbs 31 mm -hmm. woman. I don't plow, I don't rise early. You know, um, her gathering her food from afar is is takeout. And I've been doing that joke for so many years. And I finally put it into a book. And I it's two books. Another book came out the same day, a devotional, and called She Rises Late and Her Kids Make Her Breakfast. So I had two books come out in the same day. Uh, and yeah, crazy. And uh, the thing is, Proverbs 32 woman is like, I will submit to not going to work. You know, Proverbs 32 woman is like, I'm not Proverbs 31 and I'm okay. And so this, this book, as you know, is sort of a love letter to the Proverbs 31 woman going, sister girl, you've been stressing out people for thousands of years. Was it really like that? And here's what it's like for me. And it's sort of a back and forth dialogue. Um, and uh, we hope to continue the series. We hope so many women just, I'm not here to preach. I'm not here to give you mucho life lessons. I'm here when you are in line at Target or you're locked in the bathroom with Nutella and you need a good laugh and a good cry, like that's my books. You know, I, I, I don't know that your IQ is going to be higher, but you're not going to feel as alone as you did before you read it. Oh, that is so good. And uh, what I think that it's beautiful on the back. One of my very favorites when I flipped open the page and there's always that list of everyone who recommends. And so there's a lot of mutual friends but I, I really love Trisha Goyer right at the top. She says, whenever I need a good belly laugh, a dose of truth, and a dash of inspiration, I turn to Carrie Pomeroli. With this book, Carrie hands us a mirror and a makeup wipe and reminds us we don't have to cover up the real us. She's and so I, sweet. It, isn't she? I mean, come on. Uh, but I just really love the idea that you give us permission uh, to go, we don't have to be perfect. And so real quick, as we're kind of getting ready to land the plane, do you have one 
more thing that you let go of or some encouragement to share with a woman who uh, she's just like, you know what? It's just been a long, hard season. What would you want to I, share with you? I have prayed the same three word prayer ever since COVID started, no matter what. I mean, I am quarantined with my two kids. My ex-husband lives in my garage. I do not have a job. You don't even know my life. It is it is a bad sitcom. And sometimes I come back into my room and I pray this three word prayer. Lord, fix it. That's all you have to say. If you have no other words, if you're just drowning your tears in a Netflix show from, you know, I've been watching bed knobs and broomsticks, Disney movies, everything there is to watch. And I just can't focus. And I just say, I know there's a major, there's a major situation going on in my house right now, Lord. There's a major situation. Lord, fix it. And let me tell you, Barb, and you know what I'm about to say. He will. He will. Mm, so good. Oh, so everyone, I if this episode, if you've been listening, I know that this is what my heart needed. I know this is what your heart needed and your friends needed as well. So uh, you can share this episode again in the actual description of the show is the information for you to get connected to Carrie. Follow her on social media. I love watching her video clips and she posts some of the funniest memes about just life in general. And what I would really love for you to do is as you get connected to Carrie, to think about what do you need to let go of today? The wisdom that she has shared and the humor that she shared, it is real, it is solid, and it is beautiful. So Carrie, thank you so much for being on the Better Together Facebook Live. And Barb, by the way, your book really blessed me as well. And you're such a gifted writer and I just wish you all the best. And I hope people know, I hope people know that you're such a woman of many talents. So thanks for having me. Thank you. Well, audience, thank you for joining me on this week's Better Together Facebook Live. We're here every Tuesday at 7.30 Eastern time. If you want to watch the previous episodes of the Better Together Facebook Live, you can go to the blog page at barbruce.com slash blog. We're also live on YouTube. So thank you for joining me this week. You are a blessing and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Bye-bye, everyone. We're better together.